Welcome to Tough Talk, where we come together and work on getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. A Tough Talk isn't meant to be easy, because growth is hardly ever easy. And that's okay. My name is William B.J. Robinson. Feel free to call me B.J. Pronouns he, they. Uh, I am a queer, Black, and Puerto Rican arts educator, a uh, music man of many sorts, <laughs> as well as the creator and host of the Tough Talk platform. Uh, the Tough Talk platform was originally created as a, a space and a place for amplifying Black voices in conversations. Our topics have shifted from session to session since we started way back in January 2020. And as we do shift, the lead mic is passed accordingly. And so uh, all are welcome to uh, engage in, in our space here. We have multiple things happening, uh, other series, including Tough Tea, Tough Roundtable, Tough Spot, um, and then this, our Tough Talk community Zoom room. All faces, all backgrounds, and all beliefs are always welcome to join in our Zooms where it happens. Um, you, know, you can always just come to uh, add to the discussion or just be present and listen. In any capacity, all truly are welcome. What we focus on during the Tough Talk conversations as they go uh, are many different things, but we bring four different ideas kind of into focus with everything. Uh, first one being acknowledgement, a sense of uh, acknowledging what we do and don't understand, uh, as well as what we have <clears throat> and have not experienced in our own journeys. Change. At times, we uh, have to understand our place in this practice of, of change. You know, change in itself is a condition of life, and it's something that's applied to the world around us as well as ourselves. Uh, we are called to meet it. We are called to enact it. That requires education. At times we need to be educated, at other times we need to be educators. Not everyone around us always has had the same education that we have had. Not everyone around us is necessarily open to the same education that we are open to. Through it all, we have to have a practice of preservation. And that's an idea of Brown preserving ourselves, maintaining a focus on preserving ourselves so that we are in that uh, same path, preserving our connections with people, our values, our purpose, our truths, our understandings in this world. Um, it's all very complicated. Yes, it all is very exhausting. In a nutshell, you could say it's tough. And that's okay. It, we, like I said, get into all kinds of different ideas as we've been doing this for a long while. And so if you're ever uh, interested in coming to a tough round table, setting up a tough tea, taking on a private session, something with a tough spot as it goes, uh, or if you have any questions, comments, concerns about our platforms, feel free to contact us through our main email line, which is toughtalk.willbjrob at gmail.com. And I'll drop that in the chat. Uh, as well. That's toughtalk.willbjrob at gmail.com. And you can also contact us through all of our different social media platforms, which include Facebook, Instagram, uh, and YouTube. I think that kind of clears out all of the uh, fundamentals. Constantly tweaking on the platform and trying to just figure out new ways and formats to keep this all going. Um, it's been a minute since we've uh, been able to get together and have a lot to talk. And the most difficult part of that is, you know, with every minute that goes by, there's just a whole lot more to try and talk about. Um, so we're going to get into what we can in different uh, capacities. Um, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a check in. And then after that, we're going to kind of just hit a few different bullet points on things um, that may or may not reflect and respond to you. And if so, feel free to make use of the chat to check in and chime in on things. And I'd be happy to do some passing of the mic uh, for anyone that wants to dwell in on any spots to get into these conversations, uh, how comfortable or uncomfortable they may be. And we're going to touch on a little bit of everything from vaccinations and masks, uh, mandates, and those restrictions as they are rolling back and what a path forward looks like. Um, you know, the fact that we uh, are kind of possibly on the brink of war, uh, as well as midterm elections, because that's a thing already starting to happen again, 2022, uh, and all the voting rights and restrictions going along with it, uh, as well as taking time for everyone to just check in and get out your guff as you need to, or to offer up any other questions uh, and ideas into the conversation. It's a space for one and all in this. 
with that, I'm going to take my beat. I'm going to take my sip of my drink, if I can remember where I put it. Here it is. Sauvignon Blanc today. It's Friday. TGIF to those who acknowledge it. Happy weekend, if that means something to you personally. I haven't had weekends for a very long time. I have what I call week ongoings, and they're quite fine. I don't mind them. I just keep on going and tend to just work through them, but it's a good time. Very rewarding indeed. <laughs> So here we are. It is February 18, 2022. There's a global pandemic that's still going. Um, I don't know what phase of it I'd say we're in, and I really don't think anyone could quite honestly say, because uh, hindsight is far more 2020 on any of this than what we uh, try to guess and anticipate at this point. And that's okay, because we've been doing this for a while now as well. Uh, overall, though, uh, I'd say I'm still going in what I call my Rapunzel syndrome, mostly being at home. I actually left the house yesterday for the first time for something other than work or groceries. <clears throat> uh, it was surreal um, and really rewarding. It was a high school concert uh, over at Monte Vista High School put together by one of their brilliant educators, Sarah LeClaire who is a friend of the platform and has been a guest uh, on multiple parts of our series uh, in the past. Um, it was really wonderful. It was really nice to get to be in a place that had just a lot of heart and community going, um, you know, homemade food, raising money for the music program, uh, high school students, uh, a few alumni and a few other friends getting just to perform from the heart uh, in an amphitheater. Being a part of a concert is something that doesn't happen too often these days for me, as well as uh, even just singing live and out loud in a bit. Uh, so it was it was quite a joy and, and a really nice experience. So I'm in a I'm in a good space right now on this Friday, despite the brink of war and what else is happening in this pandemic and you know all that jazz. But that's my good spot for the check in. So then there's everything else. Let's see. <laughs> well. There's a big shift right now on um, the United States of America's perspective um, in terms of how we view this global pandemic and how we find our, our paths forward. Um, no surprise, there are a lot of different opinions because, oh wait, we've been on a lot of different paths from the get-go in the United States of America with this pandemic, or as I like to simply remind people, this plague. Um, for some reason, I feel like when we remember it's a plague, <laughs> it, it just, it, it seems to, I think, have a clearer view of, of what this is that we're actually dealing with. Um, nonetheless, there's a lot of different rolling back of, of mask mandates right now, which is also calling into the question of rolling back um, Overall policies, there's been the ongoing fights about rolling back vaccine mandates. Um, and I mean, it really just depends, I think, on where you dip your foot in the water as to how much there's a, a bunch of how, how wave and, and rough the waters actually are. Personally, I don't think we can predict enough of this to, to really safely start trying to pull things back. I'm someone who as far as I'm concerned, will probably continue with the habits that I've had at this point, including my Rapunzel syndrome, <laughs> um, my limited time out of the house, my limited time interacting in person with people, probably at least through the summer, uh, I think comfortably. I don't, I don't see myself being like, all right, I'm gonna get to like going out on the weekends. Um, not, <laughs> not in March. Uh, and I don't think in in April, you know, my weather vein has been how much can I do this for groceries and for my work. And the only work I've really been leaving the house for um, has been with my church job. I have a job as a choir director at Christ United Presbyterian Church in South Park, San Diego. Um, it is a home. It has felt like home since I got there. And I put that family first. That family is primarily older. And that family is potentially susceptible to any 
downturn in this plague. And so I put that first from how I gauge what activities I'm willing to engage in. And we meet on very limited capacities at this point. We haven't even been meeting back in our church for services. And we're hoping to try and aim to meet again uh, starting on March 6th. So I know that I'm I'm not interested in, in getting into any sort of out and about habit again um, until at least it's happening with my church, possibly for that <laughs> on, on my Sundays um, in March, but certainly not to just get out and about to it. I know in some places like in New York, they're at a point where uh, Eric Adams, the mayor of uh, NYC is calling for uh, working for companies to end their uh, remote work policies and to uh, get everyone to just get back into being out and about and back to it. Um, and I think that's personally something that I absolutely disagree with. Um, I, I, I'm not doing that, um, especially not at this time. And I just don't think that anyone should be uh, entirely compelled to do it. So, you know, my two cents that uh, it's not time to try and start pulling back any policies. If anything, it needs to be shoring up what we think will be a long-term policy moving forward. I am in the camp of long-term policies on knowing vaccination statuses or taking tests. And, and I think that more work should be done um, in keeping both of those uh, ideas uh, more equitably accessible to one and all vaccinations, regardless of what state of it all is that we're in, what moment in time it is, as well as testing for this, that this is a part of why we should have some sort of universal health care in, in this country. But, you know, that's a that's a fight for another day in itself. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at when it comes to, to the mask and vaccines. And and I, you know, I always like to say that I like to acknowledge I can only speak from my own experiences. I, I can only speak from my own stories. I'm someone who has lived with his own health challenges growing up, uh, as particularly asthma um, at times has been a big challenge for me. And then at other times I've been able to live with it. Um, and, and it has been a, a low interference in my life. But it's something that I know I've had to be mindful of and get into my own practices to maintain. Um, and then I've lost family in this pandemic. I have lost family that did not just entirely die from COVID, but certainly were impacted in, in having it while dealing with their own health issues. That is a part of, you know, what is described, what is being immunocompromised in, in this world. Um, and, and in my experience, I think that there has been uh, a, a lack of compassion and mindfulness for the immunocompromised in our world through all of this. I mean, it's weird how we don't seem to realize that we know, we know a large amount of our population are on different uh, medications for a whole bunch of different reasons. But that, that in itself should be a little bit of a testament that you know, we're not, we're not averaging on like, you know, perfectly healthy or whatever someone might want to call normally healthy uh, individuals with with our population, but especially with our country, okay, right? This whole obesity thing that we've been trying to fight for how long in this country? Um, I don't understand how there's this sort of gap stop of mindfulness and, and then therefore a complete lack of compassion for the fact that our world is predominantly immunocompromised individuals. And that means whatever we're trying to call a normal standard is already harmful to our own, our own well-being. We're already lying to ourselves on how much work needs to be done. I know that I also speak in a place where I have a privilege in being able to maintain my work, my livelihood, uh, and my own set of what I like to call my simple joys from being in my Rapunzel syndrome, while being in my Rapunzel syndrome, while being at home, while being a church choir director. A lot of people don't have 
that privilege, do not have the fortune to to have have you know have it worked out that way. And that is also where I think there needs to be more mindfulness on what can we do to care for as many people as possible, not just what can we do to satisfy wants as opposed to actual needs, fundamental needs. Um, and and it, hey, I'm not a governor, I'm not a mayor, you know, I am I am me in my own own two feet um, when I when I share my two cents on it. But I think it's what needs to be more in discussion. And although I know this is like my long lost hope in all of it, I think if we found a capacity to make some of this more of a nationalized movement and effort and support that we would see the progress that we have constantly yearned for throughout this plague, throughout this pandemic. I don't know how many times we've been like, well, look at what they're doing in this country. Well, look at what they're doing in that country. And we find things where we're seeing like, they're making such great progress. And for some reason, we don't pay attention to the part where it's like, yeah, look how severe their national lockdowns were. Some of these countries were fining people if they broke lockdown protocols. We didn't have one single national protocol. And then the one that got put in was about vaccinations and then got shot down in a bunch of states right away. So <sighs> I think, I think there really still needs to be some, some way to hope, you know, again, I want, it's, it's the lost hope of, of getting a real communal conversation on these different efforts and not being so individualized about it. But you know, that's, that's my two cents. I'm, I'm sure others have two cents on this too. And honestly, I'd love to hear other people's two cents on this. So 